A reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. As my daughters began to choose for themselves what books they would read, we spoke of thinking about context. For example, who wrote the book? When was it written? Why was it written? Each of these things opens our minds a little to understand the world we are about to enter when we begin a novel. I must ask my girls if they still do that. I found it helpful but perhaps they prefer to dive straight in and discover the context as they read. I can see that both ways are valid, but I was taken back to those discussions with this story of Jesus cleansing the ten lepers. I've often thought I was able to easily comprehend how the lepers felt being apart from family and friends, unable to return home. Imagine how awful it must have been to not be able to see your mother if she were unwell. How heartbreaking to be forced to let a special occasion go uncelebrated because you were forced to stay apart. Unfortunately, we are now in a position to understand more fully the impact of separation on those people. Our experience of lockdown our context over the last long while means our ability to understand and show those feelings is enhanced. Context from a different angle has helped me to understand why nine of the ten rushed off to get their equivalent of a vaccination certificate from a priest so that they could go home. We can now understand the longing to see a loved one you've been forced to say apart from. I don't need to say any more about that. We each have our own stories. Without my new context, I've often tutted about those who couldn't be bothered to turn round once they realised they were made clean and say a simple thank you to Jesus. Now, I understand. Probably their minds were filled with the excitement of getting their old lives back. The restrictions were gone and now they saw a way forward for them and those they cared about. They all said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus had mercy on them. On them all. And they did what he told them to do. Go and show yourselves to the priests. But actually, I'm still a little niggled that the transformation of their life by Jesus, who they had chosen to call upon for mercy because they knew of him and the healing he had carried out, that complete transformation warranted no acknowledgement. Again though, I am unfair. I'm very good at asking for help as I pray. I lay my concerns before God especially when I'm worried about a loved one. But even though I may not physically run away, far too many times I am much slower to say thank you than I should be. I often forget to acknowledge what good things have happened. 
This man from Samaria has reminded me of my shortcomings. This man was even more of an outcast than the nine Jews who rushed off. Even before leprosy struck, he was considered to be on the margins of decency. Jews did not usually associate with the Samaritans. It was probably only their shared illness that meant he was part of this group at all. But he was the only one who realised the extent of what had happened. He didn't just pop back and mutter a few words of thanks. Oh no. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. In encountering Jesus, he had been more than healed of that dreadful illness. He had been given a new life. Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. He went on his way with his body healed and with the spiritual healing of faith in Jesus. The foreigner, the one whom so many would have rejected, is completely accepted by Jesus. He needed Jesus and Jesus let no reason constructed by the world separate that man from being completely healed. I wonder what we can learn if we are open to people who we feel are different to us. God recognises none of the, rec the differences we have decided should separate us from one another. As St Paul says, There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Amen.